probably the most important application and physical phenomenon related to universal gravitation is orbit. The fact that one mass can use the gravitational force to go in a stable circle around another mass. So let's set it up. Let's imagine the Earth is sitting down here. And we want to think about a smaller object, a little m, orbiting around the Earth. Now, orbits can be very interesting and complicated. But we're going to start with just simple orbits. And by simple, I mean perfect circles. We're not going to get into elliptical orbits yet. And also, we're going to pretend that the large mass doesn't move. The large mass just sits in the center, and the little mass goes around it. And that's also not completely true. They actually both orbit around a common point. But, for, but just to start simple, let's, let's stick with this idea. So our definition of orbit for now is just uniform circular motion. And that's a familiar idea. We've talked about uniform circular motion earlier here in this part of the course. And the key for uniform circular motion is that there is a centripetal force providing a centripetal acceleration. So all an orbit is is uniform circular motion where gravity provides the centripetal force. All right. Gravity is going to provide the centripetal force. So we just have to say Fg equals Fc to see what kind of motion we're talking about. All right, well, that doesn't sound too bad. Let's say, what is Fg? We know it's big G, big M in this case for mass of the Earth, little m for mass of the thing going around the Earth, and then r squared. Now, when we get into orbit, we'll get a little bit farther out than the surface of the Earth. So that may become uh, the radius of the Earth plus a significant distance now. So we'll just keep calling it r. Okay, r will still just be that. We won't start dividing it up. And on the right-hand side, we know generally always what a, the uh, centripetal force has to be. To be in uniform circular motion, it has to be mv squared over r where v is the speed as it goes around the circle. So if those things are true, then you can have a stable case where gravity provides the centripetal force. So you might ask a few things. You might ask, what's the orbital speed? How fast is this thing going around? If we find out it has to be going the speed of light, then orbit's probably not possible. So let's see what we get. So if we solve this for uh, v, cancel the m's, this r, oh, two of the r's cancel, and oh, v, v, this r goes over here. You find that v is the square root of uh, gm over r. Big G, big M over the separation, gm over r. So that is how you can calculate how fast an orbit, or how fast an object moves when it's in orbit at some distance r. And then, of course, you can also ask about the period. That's the other common uh, factor that people want to think about. The orbital period t, you can always get the period if you know how fast the thing's going around. Right? The time it takes to go around um, is simply 2 pi r, the circumference, divided by the speed. So it's 2 pi r divided by v. So that means it's 2 pi r divided by uh, the square root of gm, and then you get an r up here, right? So it's 2 pi, and let's say you get a square root of r to the top. That makes that r to the 3 halves, as we say, um, over, um, over uh, the square root of gm. So that's your orbital period. That's the time it takes uh, for the thing to go around. So one thing we can see from these is that um, if you want to have an orbit at a certain radius, you really don't have a choice of speed. Right? Because big G is a constant. Big M is a constant. The mass of the Earth is the universal gravitational constant. So if you want to be out here at this R, you have to be going at a certain V. You can't just be going any speed. And if you want to be at a different radius, if you want to be closer, uh, you're going to go slower. If you want to be 
uh, no, I'm sorry, if you want to be closer, you're going to be going faster. If you want to go further out, you're going to go slower. And same thing for the period. Obviously, if the velocity is limited, then the period is also limited. If you want to be at a certain uh, 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 distance out, it's going to take a certain amount of time for the thing to get around. So the orbits are defined by this relationship. There's a specific orbital speed and period at a specific uh, distance away.